Bitcoin has vastly outperformed gold over the last five years, but is that enough to put all the Bitcoin doubters to rest? Joining me on the never-ending Bitcoin versus gold debate is none other than Max Kaiser of the Ka Kaiser Report and Bitcoin Capital. Jump the gun there. Max, welcome back in studio. What a surprise. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. I'm disguised right now. This is my costume. is the, the repo market. Oh, re oh, I wanted to go out as something truly frightening. So I've dressed up like the repo market. It's scaring everyone well, around the world out of their wits, Daniela. Well, that should be story number one. Whatever it is you have on that paper, forget it. No, no. You're going to like it. It's a treat for you. Okay, Trick or treat, me. treat. Okay, so I crunched some numbers. Yep. If you had put 10000 bucks in gold five years ago, you would have close to $12,500 today. If you had put the same amount in Bitcoin, you would have... Two hundred seventy thousand dollars. That's right. Now you might now everyone if knows. If you have following the Kaiser report, we told you to buy it at a dollar right. in twenty eleven, and you'd be a multimillionaire. You'd be retired on an island somewhere, laughing your butt off. But my question for you is this: because everyone knows you as the ultimate Bitcoin guy, but you are still in precious metals. So still make the case for gold and silver here. Despite yeah. those numbers. Well, like I said, you know, the repo market is flashing financial catastrophe. And the reason it's flashing this and telegram, you know, markets are discounting mechanisms. They tend to be price sensitive to events that are not necessarily seen or known until they actually happen. And what's happening is that China is getting ready to open the trap door on the US dollar. Here's what I'm hearing, Daniela. China is about to announce that they, in fact, have not just under 2,000 tons of gold, but closer to 20,000 tons of gold on a very aggressive move to put the final nail into the U.S. dollar. What's your source for that? As you know, uh, we do our show that's broadcast globally, and we have a lot of contacts all over Asia and in Eurasia and uh, naturally in Russia. And the feeling is that this is the time for China to now step out and put to rest this idea of censoring their global trade right. with the U.S., censoring SWIFT and other things that they do to curtail China and other countries because China's making their big move, the big move for the 21st century. They're going to pull the trap door. And let me just add that they're also, as has been reported by the media, rolling out a cryptocurrency. Uh, a lot of the details have not been divulged. I can tell you that that cryptocurrency China's rolling out will be backed by gold. It's a two... Uh, Two-prong announcement. Number one, okay. China's got 20,000 tons of gold. Number two, we're rolling out a crypto coin backed by gold, and the dollar is toast. The dollar's going, like every other paper money in history, to zero. And you say, where's gold going? Is it going to 5,000, right. to 10,000? It doesn't matter. In, go in dollar terms, gold is going to infinity. In dollar terms, Bitcoin is going to infinity because the dollar is going to zero, like every piece of garbage fiat money before it. Okay, wow. Okay, now I have a lot of questions. So one, during- Can we talk about Bitcoin capital? We will, I promise okay, you- Okay, it's up 600% well, in so, six so, years. 600% so. in six years. Bitcoin capital one, two, and three, and now we're doing Bitcoin capital four. Have you been accumulating gold this whole time then? during this, this uh, phase? You had a, you know, su had a, a great summer, had a great summer. So were you buying the Well, remember one? the campaign crash JP yeah. Morgan buy silver? Yeah. I, during that time, bought a, a ton of, of gold. I, I per, I'm, I'm sorry, silver. <laughs> uh, silver, I have uh, over now, I think it's 35,000 ounces of silver. So I have over an actual ton of silver, a, a, a real ton of silver. So, you know, a coffee table, solid block, coffee table size block of silver bullion. I have a lot of gold. I, I bought a lot of gold at 400, 500, 600, 800. Um, you know, I, I, I built my position. Uh, since 2011, I've been building my position in Bitcoin. I started buying it at a dollar, $10, $100. I bought some at $10,000. I've never sold a single Bitcoin ever. What is your belief in silver driven by? Because obviously completely different fundamentals than gold, or is it because you just see gold rising and silver following suit? It's a precious, semi-precious metal, and when the dollar collapses, people are going to look for hard assets, store of value. Gold, of course, is the king of the mountain, and silver is right behind it. It tends to be very volatile. It's a very volatile, you know, I think it was Jim Rogers who mm -hmm. said that silver was uh, gold's maniac cousin. 
Yeah, I believe he yeah, did. I he did. I, I, I believe Rogers. something along those lines. I uh, we'll check, we'll check I, I with Jim Rogers. Rogers. Of course. Oh, was it James or, Kramer? Or, or was, it wasn't, it was, it, as long as he didn't it, say it's James gold, Kramer gold. and Jim Rogers had a love child, <laughs> that love child would have said that silver is gold's crazy cousin. So with the enthusiasm we've been seeing in Bitcoin these past few days, do you attribute it to the news we're seeing coming out of China? Yes, and the repo uh, market. In other words, adoption for Bitcoin has been driven by bank failure. We saw it in Cyprus when they did a massive bail-in. It zoomed past 1,000. Uh, we saw it during uh, 2008 crisis when they gave birth to Bitcoin. The protocol is in defiance of the global banking establishment. This is why Bitcoin was created, to do battle with the central banks. As Saifdeen Amous writes eloquently in his genius book, The Bitcoin Standard, is this is a new version of Bitcoin-based banking that will put all the other central banks out of business. But I appreciate you coming on. Of course and you do. Making because your ratings <laughs> go higher. Uh, because, well, people just love watching, you know, watching you and hearing I'm from you. I'm a style, uh, uh, you know, style guru. guru. Okay, Bitcoin I designed this jacket. Guru. No, that's not it's, true. You're My tailor in London. Uh, but you're making the case for, for Bitcoin and gold, which we rarely see because people just love to pit these two assets and you know forget that you know maybe well, one's the a problem speculative is, play, one's an insurance play. The problem is that people don't equate Bitcoin with money the same way that they equate gold with money. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's false. Bitcoin is as much money. As a matter of fact, let me explain why Bitcoin is a superior form of money than gold. Okay? I'll do that right now. Both fiat money and gold are inferior to Bitcoin for one very simple reason, that with a Bitcoin transaction, it is also simultaneously the settlement. You don't have that with fiat, you don't have that with gold. If I do a transaction in gold, the gold has to be verified. If I do that in fiat, that fiat has a verification level, and we see that in the repo market, because banks don't trust each other, repo rates are skyrocketing, because you have to settle these trades. Unless, it, until a trade is settled, it doesn't really count. With Bitcoin, when you do a Bitcoin transaction, the, the transaction is the settlement. It is the settlement. That's what makes it f better money than gold or fiat. It's just as scarce, it's just as uh, divisible, it's just as portable, it's just as desirable, except it has a built-in settlement layer. It does part of the transaction. That's what these freaking guys don't understand. Like, um, you know, Peter Schiff, he's completely clueless when it comes, because he's never spent even five minutes looking at it. He just mouths the same thing over and over and over again. He's an uninformed imbecile. I gotta get he's an you. imbecile. I gotta get you both. Imbecile. You feel better now? Yes. You're okay? I feel much better. I'm right. I saw a kid down in the lobby with a bag of candy. <laughs> and you stole and it. I, I, I jammed him on the head, and I got a bag, a whole sack full of great okay. candy. Okay, last time you were on, Fantastic. you saw Bitcoin go to 100,000. Um, yes. But you're more passionate, I feel, this time. So are you really willing to double down or move that forecast even higher? I think it's just a matter of timing. So the forecast is still 100,000 plus. But, you know, let's be honest. In dollar terms, it's infinity, right? I mean, it could go to 5 million, 10 million against a dollar. Uh, just like gold is making new all-time highs against mm -hmm. currencies all over the world right now, it's, yeah. you know, people don't report the fact that gold's made a new all-time high against the euro, right. against the pound, against the Indian rupee, against the South African right. rand, against the Russian uh, ruble, right? It's made new well, all-time well, highs against the all these stands, currencies though, you know, right now. This Chile, Algeria, Lebanon, uh, Colombia, Ecuador. It's, yeah. a rev it's a revolution. People are up in arms. Well, Have if you, you ever the seen anything? Sorry. If you watch the Kaiser Report, Daniela, we've been saying since our show first started airing 10 years ago, we call it Giabo, the global insurrection against banking occupation. It started with Occupy Wall Street and the Arab Spring. When activists realized around the world that the problem was the banks, the problem is what we call the Cantillon effect. When the central banks print money, it doesn't go into the real economy. It goes into Jamie Dimon's friends' pockets, who hoard that cash and buy Medigliani's for $150 million apiece. They buy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, penthouses off Central Park for $200 million a crack. So that money is, is, is not circulating in the real economy because they, those guys are friends. Ben Bernanke now works for a hedge fund, and they just dial up the phone to these guys and say, send us another billion dollars, and it goes right into their pocket. I call it interest rate apartheid. If, in fact, you're a friend of Jamie Dimon, you're a friend of Wall Street, you can borrow infinite amount of money for 0% interest. If you don't have a friend on Wall Street, you've got to pay 16% credit card, or you go to a payday lender, you're paying 2,000, 3,000% annualized interest rate. That's interest rate apartheid. We live in Ben Tustins of high interest rates unless you're a friend of Mnuchin or uh, Jay Powell or Jamie Dimon. Then you can borrow infinite amount of money at zero. But guess what? China's saying, you know what? We've had 
We had her up to here. We're pulling the trap door on the dollar. We got 20,000 tons of gold. We're introducing a gold-backed crypto settlement layer onto the global economy, and the U.S. can pound sand. All gold they've mined internally. They have been accumulating gold for years. You talk to folks like Alistair McLeod, who is a research director over there at Gold Money, mm -hmm. who I respect highly. And he goes into the details. Uh, all those gold gang guys that I follow and you follow, like James Rickards and others, who have really put a lot of work into doing the research here, will tell you that China has been accumulating gold overtly but uh, subvertly. Uh, there, you never see a gold I know, bar. We just can't get the numbers. You never, yeah, exactly. But they've been waiting for this moment where it's essentially it's the Pearl Harbor of the currency markets. Just like Japan on, on December 7th dropped bombs in Pearl Harbor, China is going to say to the U.S., uh, I think in the next six months, the nine months, they're going to say it's the Pearl Harbor of the currency market. Guess what? We own 20,000 tons of gold, and we're in, introducing a gold-backed crypto, and you guys are you're, you're, you're ancient news, okay? Wow. This, is, this is a war, war footing. We're on a <laughs> currency war footing. Um, Max Carter. That's what I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin Capital. Bitcoin Capital, one, two, and three. So in 2013, we launched this. Myself, Simon Dixon, mm -hmm. over at uh, Bank to the Future. We launched Bitcoin Capital, one, two, and three. It's up, just the equity portion of, the, of those funds is up over 600% in uh, six years. So we're talking about the best performing crypto fund in the industry by far. It's probably the best performing fund in the world. I can't think of another fund that's up over 600% in six years. So I was talking to uh, Mark Yusko, who's over there at Morgan Creek Capital. And um, he's thinking about coming on as an advisor for Bitcoin Capital 4. So I think we'll raise maybe 50 to 100 million. It's going to be Bitcoin focused, uh, second layer focused. And uh, we're going to hopefully repeat what yeah. we've done before. That would be the best performing VC fund in the world, bar none. Show me the numbers. I'm the king. I am the king. I get to filming. wear clothes like this because I am the king. I uh, wanted to get your thoughts on uh, Libra. Mark, uh, Mark Z taking a lot of heat in D.C. last week. Uh, does that move forward? Uh, what's the future for Libra? It's a non-starter. And the only thing it did is it educated Congress about why Bitcoin's great and why Libra is a non-starter. But he is, I think, panicking because China, he realizes when they launch their gold back crypto coin that they're going to take over huge swathes of the global commerce business, and uh, they're trying to desperately come up with something to compete. Congress is too freaking stupid. Brad Sherman uh, obviously has had a lobotomy because his mind is, has stopped functioning. The things he says about Bitcoin uh, are so misinformed and so out egregiously um, like irresponsible as a, as, a, as a politician that we elect and put into office that I literally, when I see his face, I vomit. I vomit yes. onto, on, I, 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 I spew that's, chunks. That's, that's, it's like Brad oh. Sherman talks and I spew PMI. chunks. I PMI. spew. He's so stupid. You know what? I love asking you questions that have nothing to do with anything really, but um, Edward Snowden. What about him? Well, he made some comments uh, about Bitcoin recently, uh, you know, heading to 16,000. But my question, it was more this. Were you as shocked as I was when he came out and personally burst my bubble that the U.S. never had any interactions with aliens and there's no alien here in the U.S. in Area 51? Oh, right. Were no, you, that's... Were you depressed as I was to, to know this? Well, uh, you should talk to James Kramer about that because, you know, I've talked to James a few times. He's told me he's been violated by aliens. He's been probed in places he, he shouldn't talk well, about on a family show. And the result is pretty clear. I mean, look at James, the way he screams and shouts. And none of his recommendations work, if you've noticed. But they, he has a job I still. To know job. I, I hope they don't edit that out. Are you guys going to censor that out again? You're all censoring me. <laughs> this is like a three-hour interview. It only sees five minutes of it because of Edward Scissorhands back there. Snip, snip, snip. Okay, I Daniela I, Scissorhands. I you snip, snip, Edward snip, snip. Maybe in... Um, I just know him as a public figure, as, as, as everyone so else does. are there aliens, in your opinion? Um, I, I, you know, on a day like today, Halloween, I can tell you one thing. There are ghosts. I've seen a few ghosts today. <laughs> they're out there on the street, and they're, they're holding candy. And they're, not, they're easy to, uh, to, to mug. There's nothing in New York. If you're a ghost, don't go to New York City on Halloween, because you're going to get mugged. I've mugged I like five wonder, of them. I always wonder, though, why do all Either ghosts... Either there, there could the be kids. <laughs> there could be kids wearing costumes, but I just assume they're ghosts. But, so I whack them on the head, and I steal their candy. 
You know, I, I just assume that they're ghosts, okay? I mean, if you don't want to be mugged in New York, don't dress up like a ghost. Don't come anywhere near me on Wall Street. I worked on Wall Street. I worked two blocks from here for 140 Broadway I can't imagine. at Payne Weber. That's where I got my start in you know, you 1982. Were like suit and tie yeah. going in. I can't. I went to Mo Ginsburg, got my three suits and two pair of pants. Wow. Stepped into my as an account executive. I worked on Wall Street for How eight years. You, I worked Payne Weber. That? Oppenheimer, Shearson Lehman Hutton, and Alex Brown. I, I was the number three producer in the options uh, market at Shearson Lehman Hutton. That's a 10,000 brokers. Did you enjoy that time at all? <clears throat> yeah, I made a freaking boatload, and I re <laughs> went into retirement in Paris for five okay. years. I lived in Paris for five years from 1990 to 1995, uh, just basically chasing women. I mean, to be quite honest. Well, now you have Stacy, the ultimate then, goddess. Then uh, in 2003, I met Stacy. And I'll leave you with this thought. What? Why do all ghosts come from the same century? Did you ever think about that? They all have like those big balloon skirts and the Marie Antoinette wigs. Just food for thought. There's no modern ghosts. Right. That, that's exactly right. And that's why um, the guy who just uh, lost $48 billion with WeWork, he's coming <laughs> up with a new IPO called Ghost Work. All right. And it's valued at $500 billion. And James Kramer just recommended it on this program a few days ago. And Peter Schiff's still an idiot. Max Kaiser, I'm gonna have a lot of editing to do. Thank what? you so much. All right. <laughs>